Here's the kit, our stock, built out of the box, no paint, not too impressive, looks okay, it's a good base to work from. Then here, with bare plastic, minimal paint, marker pens and weathering. Yeah, Gundam marker pens! Hey guys, mostly up until now I've been showing you things that I know really well. I'd like to mix that up for you and show you some test runs of stuff that I've got no clue about, and this includes Gundam marker pens. Now I have used a somewhat similar product, I've used Copic, 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 the, uh, the marker pens that are alcohol based and they're not bad, but let's give these a test out. I was pretty excited to check out what it said on the back of these, uh, you know, I, I mentioned to you guys that uh, I speak read write Japanese, but the back of the, uh, of the package is absolutely useless. It just says, yes, use these pens. I'm not kidding. It's absolutely useless. To double check with it, I asked my wife, she's native Japanese speaker, I said, you know, please check these for me. Am I, am I missing something? Are there some clues here that I should know? No, it just says, yes, write these, use these on your models. Boom, giveaway. Yes, I'm giving this away. Please click the button top right of your screen. I got two versions. Uh, there's the, the basic marker pens and then there's the ones called Real Touch. I mean, they both sounded kind of cool and uh, that's what was in stock. Here I'm using the most basic type. Now, on the, the, the back of the, the instructions, it says ink, but it's not ink. It's not even close. As soon as I uncapped these, I could smell that it was lacquer based, Japanese lacquer based. So uh, it's probably made, it. they're made by Mr. Color, so uh, I could tell it was lacquer based. But, you know, there's different ways that they can soften these, uh, these compounds, etc. So I'm going to test out a, a handful of different ways and see how they work including the little pens that they give you inside the kit. They give you one, it's a, it's a clear pen and it says like Keshigomu. It says something like that that means, you know, uh, to, to re a remover uh, and a way that you could spread it. It doesn't go into a lot of detail. Now I needed to get the ink moving. Uh, you needed to push down against the model to get the ink moving from these. That was easy enough. Now here I am, I've got the, uh, the removal pen and uh, this, this, you know, I was thinking, wow, this looks pretty good. Sorry I got off camera, uh, I'm still learning it. But uh, it did move them off. You're not missing it, even with my, my very crappy <laughs> video work here, you're not missing anything. Because what I found was uh, it did move them, it was really hard. I wouldn't want to use this on a painted surface. Of course, that's not what they're designed for. They're, they're, they're meant to be used on, on bare plastic. And it did work okay, but wait until you see what happens. Uh, I can't wait to tell you. What happens is it leaves this really awful crappy powdery residue on the plastic and it just look, looked horrible. I was, you know, I was really disappointed. I was mortified. Uh, th these are not on the must buy list. These are the hell no list. I'm trying to stretch. I'm trying to pull the ink out. Uh, I'm just, I'm trying to do anything with it, but no, there's no love. There's no joy. There's no nothing. Much nothing. I was feeling pretty kind of, you know, lonely, upset, sad, samishi about now because the, the, the nib, the nib was really, really hard. So at least with the Copic markers, the nibs are soft and you can use them to kind of push around details and what have you. But these are, it's a hard plastic nub and uh, I was not enjoying this. It wasn't fun. Um, no good was coming of this. I've got to tell you, I know I'm overusing this gag, but I'm telling you, much disappoint. Uh, oh well, uh, that, that's how it works, right? We're gonna test these things out, see if we like it or not. But you can see that white crappy residue and I'm trying to wipe it off and, you know, uh, disappointed. Oh well, let's see what we can salvage. At the end of this video, if you'd like more details, my supporters have access to a 25 minute extra detail version. Click the top right of your screen. Here I'm trying to, uh, to, to create some, some additional weathering effects if I can. Uh, and it's about here that I really discovered that, the, that they do have a, a slight lacquer component in here because it did melt some of the, uh, the lacquer paint that I painted into the detail here. Now just imagine if you put any acrylic paints on these models and you use this stuff on them, it's just going to rip the, you know, rip the heck out of them. And it won't be, won't be pretty. Okay, well that's enough heartache on those ones. Now let's go with the real touch markers. I mean, they sound better, real touch, and it says to give a you know, on the front here, it says they're supposed to give you more of a realistic look. I'm hoping it's kind of a paint suspended in the, uh, in the, in the pen. I gave it a shake, but there's no paint sloshing around sound. It's just a, just feels like a, you know, a kid's, kid's texture type pen. Uh, it's supposed to work in a similar way. It says painted into the, uh, into the details to get some, some ink into there. It went in a little bit. It didn't run as, as well as the first set of pens. Uh, 
and and the color was not as uh, as solid it was uh, it was a little bit weak it was a nice warm gray had that going for it but it was quite weak feeling it uh, it didn't even feel like a you know a permanent marker you know that 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 sinking sensation you get when you use a permanent marker on a whiteboard in the office or at school not quite even like that this set also comes with its own little remover pen it's it looked promising the nib looked a little softer at least uh, stretching it out here and again just just not a lot of not a lot of fun not a lot of joy uh, putting the ink in using a nib using a, uh, a pen uh, just like with Copic I don't mind that it seems somewhat okay but using these uh, these eraser slash uh, you know they're supposed to be pens with thinner in them I guess to um, to manipulate the ink to make it do something we want I, I don't think it's a tool that I'm going to get into uh, if you're really stuck with it and you just can't handle a brush maybe give these a try but the time spent and invested on, on getting a brush to work for you to do some of this work will just pay a lot more dividends I mean Unless you're going to, you know, no, no, there's, there's no good comeback. Even being a graphic artist these days, you're going to do it with a stylus. You, you don't want to be using these kinds of pens. You can see all that white crap there. Oh, just not liking that. This one didn't leave the white crap, but it was just so limp. Little side test opportunity here. I've still got the real touch marker, uh, clearer pen, removal pen in hand. So I'll test it out and see if it removes that white junk I'm talking about from the first set of pens, the first remover from that. It, it re-wet them a little bit, but it didn't really do much for it. So no, that doesn't work. Okay, so far so fail. Let's flip it over. As you can see, I've been working on the back of the model. When you're testing out new stuff, that is the way to go. Test on the back. So I flipped it over. I'm going to go with the first set of markers. They seem to have a little bit more promise. Now what I've done is I've pushed them a little bit harder into the plastic to get more ink flow with them. And uh, that worked reasonably well. Now that I've got one little technique that seems to be okay for me, I'll try it out in some other places on the model uh, around the paint. So what I've basically turned the marker into, I'm not using it as a, uh, as a push and, and point device, I'm using it as a flow. I'm, uh, I'm pressing it in against the details and letting the ink that, that's held inside of it flow into it. And it's actually, for that purpose, it's not too bad. You know, uh, this is a very standard way I'll go through things. I'll just I'll, I'll test them out as we all do, and um, you know through a series of, uh, of escalating failures, you'll eventually stumble across something that gives you an, a kind of okay result. Now the ink from the first set of markers is not bad. It's nice and dark. This one's uh, I, I, I did want black. I wanted for I wanted high contrast here. It's it's a very dark gray black. It's good enough, and uh, flowing it around here. I want to see how it looks when it dries and uh, it has a low enough viscosity it flows quite well and uh, so once I figured this out I was able to go around the model very quickly and uh, drop it into the, uh, the the panel lines that I wanted to to accentuate and uh, so far so good flipping the backpack around uh, I want to make a special note here now if you guys are using a different paint to me um, the white paint that you see there, that's uh, Gundam Color by Mr. Color, and it's a semi-gloss paint. Now, the reason I make mention of this is uh, many of you are asking me, you know, can I use acrylic paints? And of course you can. They're your models. You can use whatever you want. And uh, I'm happy to show you different ways of making that work. Now, if you were to use something like Vallejo here or Ammo, which is very popular, uh, you'll probably be best uh, served if you put a slight clear coat over it. I know it's adding steps, which is a bit of a pain in the backside, but you want to protect any work that you've done. Now, with the Mr. Color paints, you don't have to. They're, they're pretty bulletproof. They're very hard. One of the reasons I like them is because I'm an idiot and they're idiot proof. So, if you do use a softer paint like that, do a quick shot of something like, I know in the US, Tester's Dull Coat is very popular. It's very good. Uh, I myself, uh, I can get Super clear, Mr. Super clear in the can, and I just love that stuff. I've, it's never failed me. It's consistent. Just love it. But uh, yeah, clear coated if you need to. Nine minutes in, finally the Gundam makes an appearance. Now you can see this is uh, this is how it looks, just painted without any uh, any of the details of, uh, of doing the panel lining in, and uh, you can see they it improves the appearance a great deal, but they look quite flat. And uh, that's one of the reasons, I think, with the Gundam property, Gundam models, Gunpla, they, um, because of the, the flat panel lines and the way they're put together, they really benefit. They must, you've got to do the panel lines. It's, uh, if you could only choose one thing, 
I would do the stickers and do the panel lines. That's what I've learned anyway from, from doing Gunpla so far. Now, six months from now, I'll probably disagree with previous old Lincoln, but at the moment, that's how it looks. Now, back to, back to what I'm actually doing here. I'm, uh, I'm going with the drop, drop the, you know, drop the mic, drop the pen, drop the ink method here. And I'm finding this is working with me pretty well. Uh, it has a good workflow that uh, I just need to press it. I need to keep the tip pointing down. Uh, these pens are obviously not pressurized, so it's a gravity feed. And uh, I'm pushing the, the, the nib there against the plastic. I'm getting pretty good flow. Now, one of the good reasons I think is that I'm putting this on the bare plastic. Uh, that was a really good idea. I, uh, well, and you know, it's not my idea, that's Bandai's idea. So I'm just, I'm just working with them. I think um, once we, when we do full repaints of Gunpla, these markers are not going to be the way to go. I just thought I'd better throw that out there. Uh, most of the techniques and different principles and uh, methodologies that I'm working with, most of them are mix and match, but this one will kind of be a standalone. When we want to use the bare plastic of our Gumpla, we can use the marker pens. And uh, so far so good, using this around the bare plastic details, uh, it's nice and quick, and you can see here I'm dropping it in here. Every now and then the paint would stop, and that's mostly because I'm tipping the pen up to, uh, to get it into the into the viewfinder here to make sure I'm, I'm getting it on video for you guys. But all in all, mostly I'm just dropping it into the details here. There's a couple of places where it's too deep and it's just sucking up the paint and there's not a lot I can do about that. But most of these places, it, it's adding a lot of good depth. Uh, it's running pretty well in most places. There we go, see that main down the back of the thigh there? It went down most of the way, but that is actually a recessed detail from putting the kit together. But the, the detail below that, I'm about to hit that now, boom, that, look at that, look at that. That one's rolling really, really well. There it goes, just about to join up, and come on, roll with me. No. So, I'll leave it a little bit, and, uh, and see if that will eventually click up, and I'll, I'll flick around to the model again. Now, putting it on to the, uh, some places that uh, have paint on them, if it's a flat paint, it will, it will spread and discolor the paint and you won't be able to get it off. That's just also another heads up. You'll see it here. I do it on the back of the legs of this guy and I don't think, you know, it's, you could say it's somewhat of a fail, but it's also a way of uh, discoloring and, and adding a, a weathering step. So, you know, all good. I'm sure you guys have also discovered this. Sometimes our biggest failures or the things that go the worst on our models can end up being the best learning experiences and something that we can make uh, the next model look really awesome with. So, you know, all good. Plus, my wife joked with me. She said, okay, so maybe you're going to mess up a $10 Gumpla. It's not going to be the end of our lives. And, you know, as usual, she's very right. Like a guy could ever admit that his wife is wrong on YouTube. Oh! Alrighty, the Gundam Maka pen, the Keshi pen, is no good. It's out of here. I'm done. Finished. So, let's try some other stuff. What I thought I could test out would be to add some of this. Okay guys, I've got to wrap it up there. I've uh, I finished editing and doing the full video version of this. It's 25 minutes long and my Patreon supporters get that one. Um, I've, got to, I've got to be up early in the morning. It's late Sunday night here for me. So this is all I can do for the free one. Sorry, that's it for this week. Make sure you're subscribed. Uh, please check out Patreon. The, these cool videos are only a uh, $5 subscription per month. It's a really good deal. And uh, see you next week. Cheers guys, bye. Thank you.